Hey, I'm Travis. And I'm Adele. And we're with The Noble Marriage. We're here to inspire you to discover true love and intimacy with your spouse. And on this channel, we have transparent, authentic conversations that point your marriage back to Jesus and a life of freedom. We do. And if you want some more resources or a way to contact us for additional support, you can check us out at thenoblemarriage.com. We are so glad that you are here today and thank you so much for joining our community. Hey, and welcome to Coffee and Conversations. And today's coffee sponsor is a good friend of ours, Lonely Monk Coffee. Thank you for this. Thank it is, you. It's so yummy. It is so tea. good. And let me just get, mm, it smells so good. It smells amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. I appreciate the coffee. So today's conversation is about freedom. Do you want more freedom in your life? Who wouldn't want more freedom, right? Freedom from anger, pride, fear, guilt, shame. Yes, not being good enough, I'm a failure. These are all things that we have recently been able to get a lot of freedom over in our lives. Yeah, which I thought we had already gotten all that freedom. I did too. Until I learned more, which is just so cool. And that's what we want to share with you guys is in we've been in this freedom course now for about 11 weeks and it just ended and it starts off with the comparison of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life and so i would love for you to share about the garden of eden and how that transfers into these two trees so god says something to adam and he said don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then later, whenever Eve was tempted to eat, uh, she said, God said. To the serpent. To the serpent. Not only should I not eat of it, but I shouldn't touch it. Which I think is really cool because God didn't say that to Adam. So apparently Adam told Eve in a leadership decision, hey, don't do this. But what I really think happened is because he's a man and he knows temptation. He knows when you have a hold of something, like when there is more of a possession or access to, it's harder to resist temptation. Yes. Which I think is really cool that that happened. But they ended up, they did eat of it. And what immediately occurred it just blows my mind is they had immediate fear, shame. They noticed that they yeah. had no clothes on. They, they were guilty. They felt guilty and they wanted to hide and isolate. And oh man, I see so much of my life in that right there. When I do things, when I make choices that I know don't align with God, I want to just hide and make myself small and little. Do you, do you feel that way? Yeah. Yeah. You, you if you're separate. relating to this, hit the like button so we know that you guys experience the same thing we do. <laughs> yeah. Whenever that happens, there is a separation from God and me. And it's not like God went anywhere. Right. He's still there. God is always there. He says, I will always be with you. It's not like he went mm -hmm. anywhere. It was my choice, my choice to separate from God. Yeah. And that's so powerful. Because God wanted Adam and Eve to eat of the tree of life abundantly as much as they wanted. But the one tree that they weren't supposed to eat of is the knowledge of good and evil. So now they have knowledge of all the evil that is out there. Whereas before, they didn't even have knowledge. They had what is referred to like a childlike mind. They were completely innocent. And I just think that's so interesting because now that they have the knowledge, they know about fear and mm. death and shame all and shame guilt. and guilt, all these things that God never intended for us to experience, which that's is right. just so interesting. And so then it compares the tree of the knowledge of good and evil versus living in the tree of life. And this is what I think is so powerful. And I realized, oh my goodness, like I am a Jesus loving believer, 
And I find myself in the knowledge of good and evil Me too. more than I was finding myself in the tree of life, which is what he wants for our life. Yeah. And just that was so interesting to me. I agree. One of them says I need to do more and like be more and I need to accomplish. You gotta earn it. I need to earn something. One of them says that. And the other one is like just who I'm being. Like an example of that is um, like I was asking myself or actually this question came up for me. How godly am I? Mm. And where do I put myself on this scale? Well, then I go to what do I do to be godly? Well, um, I should be having more devotions. I should be praying more. I should be yeah. in church every time the doors are open. I should be doing more. All those would raise your status, right? On your scale. Right. Like if you pray more than three times a week, you're probably going to get a higher status. Yeah. If you read every day, you may get a higher status. Does That's this, what I thought. Do you Does follow this? Like, uh, I would agree with the, with you that there, like, if you imagine there's a scale of zero to 100 and maybe Billy Graham, he's a really, Really he's probably like guy. at a 98. He's in the 90s, right? And then maybe the pastor of your local church, still a great guy. Maybe he's in the 80s. But because I don't do the things that I'm supposed right. to do, maybe I'm in like the 40s. If I have that concept, and you could see if you have that concept, there's no way I can win. No. I am always a failure in that concept. And that has everything to do with the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's the doing side. But... What I love so much is the tree of life. Jesus did it. Did it all. He did it already. He died on the cross for me and you. There is nothing left mm. to do. I think about that, Adele. I think about that. And it's kind of like, uh, do I not appreciate what he already did? Right. Do I not appreciate Jesus going through all that he went through for me? That I need to come back and I need to have shame and I need to have all this condemnation on myself to make sure I don't mess up again. Right. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. He says that. So if there's condemnation, guess where that's coming from? The tree of life of good and evil. And you need to put mm -hmm. horns on that because that is from Satan. That's straight from Satan. In our flesh definitely yeah. wants to gravitate in it does. that way. It's just a natural thing. And then also like needing approval, needing God's approval. Like, God, do you approve of me today? Well, I said this and thought this and did that. And maybe God doesn't quite approve of me today. So I need to do more. And then what right? that makes Adele want to do and what it makes me want to do is just the same thing Adam and Eve did. When they ate the fruit, what did they do? They hid. Yeah. They separated themselves. And what happens with us is we separate ourselves from God saying, I did this thing. You must be mad at me. Mm -hmm. And I need to separate and make myself small during a period yeah. of time that you feel like shame or guilt or condemnation Unlovable. needs to take place. Yeah. Like I think about Haven, our daughter, because I... Like I compare my love with her with our father's love for us. And that there's nothing that she could do that would take my love away from her. And it's the same thing in the tree of life. There's nothing we could do that would make us unlovable. Nothing. God loves me how I am. Right where I am. Everything. And that is just so comforting. And that, man, I can just like just chill out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And just... Like receive that, That's you good. know? Yeah, I agree with that. And then also obeying from duty, like, you know, all the rules that we got to follow to be a Christian. So you there's, know? I don't know how many, but I know back in the Old Testament, there's over 630 or something rules that man had to make up because we are fallen people and we will... Left in our own devices, we kind of lean toward destroying ourselves. Well, and it's a way for control. It is. And control in our lives. 600 and something rules that we need to follow. And there's no way we can keep up with those. And Jesus already did it all. And so yeah. uh, a lot of times uh, some religions try to do Jesus plus. Mm -hmm. 
Like you have Jesus plus these rules, and that's right. what's needed, and, and that's not needed. And the tree, of, the life, tree of life it says you obey and delight. And yeah. I'm actually experiencing that for the first time in my life where I want to be more like Jesus. What do those actions look like? And it is, it's automatically obeying in like, I'm excited to be mm -hmm. that. And it's just so cool. It's so different from you got to follow all the rules. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have that viewpoint. Mm hmm which I did not. If yeah. you don't have that viewpoint, which you did not, yeah. it means that there is a distorted view of who God is. Right. Again, that we have to earn it by following the rules and being Christian and all these things. Like, it just blows mm. my mind. Yeah, we can take a different look of who God is to us. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of times we take on our earthly father's relationship of right. that's who God is to us. And sometimes that may not be uh, effective for us because God is what he says he is in the Bible. Yeah. And uh, there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. And there's no judgment for us in that. Yeah. That's so good. He paid it all. And then one last thing I just wanted to mention is that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is uh, being the judger of right and wrong versus um, the tree of life is grace. And forgiveness which is what Jesus offers it's us That's right. that don't allow like I don't allow myself to forgive myself Jesus forgives me it's mm. done he did it and there is grace and forgiveness but I shouldn't have done that thing and now I have to experience guilt and shame and unforgiveness for myself and I'm the one mm. doing all that. Not that Jesus is that way towards me. What comes up for me when you say that is he does forgive you. Like he does forgive you. But what you're, is actually happening is you're blocking that forgiveness. Right. You are blocking it because you're saying, no, I don't deserve it because I don't forgive myself. So you're not yet actually receiving his yeah. forgiveness. Right. It's not even there. But he wants desperately to give it to you. And that goes back to the separation of God is still that right there. The mm -hmm. separation is when I choose mm -hmm. to be in to the knowledge isolate. of good and evil. Mm. And then I look at like the, the way that the world is right now, just so full of fear. There is so much fear out there And it's there contagious. Right now. Fear is contagious. And that is living in the knowledge of the evil in the world. And when we really got that about two years ago, we really started to protect the consumption that we have of the things that are going on in the world because they do have an impact. Mm. They have a huge impact. Yes. And if it is making me be fearful in any way, I am now back in the knowledge of good and evil versus living in freedom. No matter what is going on in the mm. world, I get to choose. So why wouldn't I choose freedom when I know how? You do get to choose. And what's really cool is uh, King Solomon, one of the wisest men in the world, said, guard your heart because out of it is the wellspring of life. And why in the world would he say that? He's wise for a reason. He went through a lot of life circumstances. So he had a good bit of knowledge around that. And he knows that out of your heart, out of what comes into your mind and into your body, yeah. it affects your heart. And out of that comes words and, and thoughts mm -hmm. in our minds. And what we consume, if we're consuming the news and, and negative social media and maybe internet sites that we shouldn't be going to or, or TV yeah. shows we shouldn't be consuming, if we're mm -hmm. consuming that, it affects our hearts and it affects our thoughts and our, our words that come out yeah. of our mouth. We need to guard our hearts because out of it is the wellspring of life. Absolutely. When we started reducing the amount of news, which is so fear-based, when we started reducing that, we started experiencing mm. more joy, more happiness, less fear, yeah. less destruction. Yes. A news channel is a profitable company. They are <laughs> companies that need profit. And how do they get profit? Fear is contagious. Yes. And so why would they show you good things 
when they can show you fear-based things and that makes you keep going back to them, keep looking at the same you, sources. Because you gotta be up thing. to date. You gotta know. Yeah. But that is, again, that is eating of the fruit, of the knowledge of good and evil. That's the world. Yeah, and it changed my life when we stopped watching news and when we stopped so, yeah. um, consuming negative, social negative yeah. social media. Absolutely. It absolutely changed uh, how I show up. And so just a few more things from the tree of life is that is I am loved. I have kindness, having an innocent mind and doing what we can to keep that innocence from like we're talking about from the world. Um, I'm enough. I you am are. enough. I'm and so empowered. Are you. I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit through the tree of life. I'm complete. And I get to live in freedom. And, you know, when I was measuring, like, how godly am I? And then I realized that's from the knowledge of, of the good and evil. It was me recognizing that it's more about me just being light. Being who Jesus and God have called me to be. And all of those things are going to fall into place. And the... I'm going to have less and less and less of the knowledge of good and evil mm. when I'm being who he created me to be. That is good. And what I love about that, Adele, is you don't have to do anything to change yourself. No. You just let go of the things that are the of tree of life, tree of the knowledge, knowledge of, of good, good and, and evil. evil. You let go of the fear. You let go of the, the limiting thoughts. You let go mm -hmm. of the things that hold you back. That's all you're doing Preach is you're it. letting go, right? <laughs> yes. You're letting go of those things and you're not fixing yourself because there's nothing to fix. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you God. can have that too. We all can have it. We all have access to it because it's all been paid for. We just have to make the choice. Listen, Satan it. has a plan for your life. Paul says it in, in the Bible. He says, Satan is scheming for you. And there's somewhere else where it says that he is a roaring lion, that he has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Steal, kill, and destroy what? Our thoughts, our minds. Yeah. He is there to take captive our thoughts because if he can keep us living in a hell of isolation, then we are not effective for the kingdom of God. And Jesus already paid it all for you. You have access to it. Yeah. We just, the, what we do is just, acknowledge that acknowledge that he is our lord and savior and that we can't do life without him and he will absolutely rescue you from satan yeah. absolutely because he's already paid it all he's already done he it he did all. it we just have to want it mm. and accept it and yeah. then eat the fruit from the tree of life and that's where freedom lives so if you want more freedom from all those things we were talking about, anger, pride, not being good enough, failure, not taking responsibility, and a few more. Like Travis said, it's about letting go. Let those things go and accept the tree of life and what Jesus wants for you. And you will experience that freedom just like we are. And it is amazing. Yeah, so this is really cool. Is I we she said earlier we thought we had freedom before this. Yeah. And what's really cool about that is we have thought that multiple times over the last couple of years. Yeah. And you don't know what you don't know. And so what really shows up for me is there's an even more freedom. Yes. That we're going to get. And I can't even imagine that, but I'm so excited to do this journey and do this life that I'm on right now. Because it is nice. Yeah, it sure is. Living in freedom with your spouse is literally the best thing ever. So, we're so glad you joined us for this conversation today. And we look forward to seeing you at the next one. Bye! Bye. Hey, you're not finished yet. We're here to make a difference and inspire your marriage and other marriages as well. And if you found value in these videos, leave us a comment and let us know what that was so we can make other videos similar to that. We would love for you to join our community of awesome, like-minded people. They are awesome. Go ahead and hit subscribe and you'll get daily motivational videos that impact your life and inspire you to be your best self. 
This also helps us get our message out to marriages all over the world. So thank you so much for subscribing and joining our community.